By way of introduction, my name is Yendor Felgate. People always say to me, Yendor is a, a very unusual name. Um, where does it come from? And usually um, there are guesstimates all over from Norway through to uh, South America um, and the Middle East. So I'll put you out of your misery. And the easy way to remember it, if you take it backwards, it's Rodney. I was named after my uncle Rodney and it was the 60s and my parents thought they were very creative. You say it as you see it, yen, like in Japanese, yen and door, so yen door, and I respond quite uh, quite nicely to that. So that gives you a little bit of sense. I'm a co-founder and director of the BH group, the Being Human group, but the important things today is to talk a little bit about strengths. So you'll see on my background over my shoulder, my top five strengths, and this is what I'm going to bring to the party today and the way that I'm going to facilitate. You'll notice first things, my top five strengths dominated by two colors, purple for execution. So I love to get things done and complete, and we will complete this by 4.30 our time. And then the green, which is the strategic thinking stuff. And you'll see that I will always try and provide you with ways of thinking about strengths and optionality around how you can use strengths throughout. So I'll be bringing that to the table. Achiever, achiever doesn't mean success, unfortunately, but it does mean completion and executing. I love completing those lists and I love taking them off when they're done. My second one is deliberative. Deliberative is really about decision-making and being, being um, quite thoughtful around how we make decisions, particularly when it comes to identifying risks. So if you can imagine, if you've ever been bungee jumping and you're standing on the precipice and you're about to go head first into the chasm, somebody with deliberative would make sure that the bungee cord is tightly tied to your ankle. So way cool strength. My third one is really strategic. It's about optionality. It's not really about the MBA stuff. So I'm always going to give you different views or different ways of thinking about the patterns, about how strengths can bring to the table and how it works. My fourth one is learner. I'm curious. I'm that type of person that used to, as a child, take things apart and then couldn't put them back together again. So I'm very curious about how things work, particularly around people. And then my fifth strength that you'll see a lot of today's ideation. So I'm the type of person that you bring to a brainstorm. So this is a little bit about me. I'll talk a little bit about more about what BHG does a bit later. But Mahreet, do you want to jump in and just say hello? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the session. Uh, we look forward to getting to know new people and learning why you are so excited about, um, about strengths and want to know more about strengths. My top five, I have individualization at the top. Um, I love potential and thinking about potential. Uh, then I also have learner. I love to learn about people and technology. I also have a strength called belief, which has got, not, got nothing to do with religion, but has got everything to do with values. And then I've got connectedness. Connectedness looks at, uh, looks at things in terms of patterns and putting puzzle pieces together. I also have Maximizer. Maximizer loves to take things from average to excellence, and that really gets me going. Thanks, Endor. Excellent. So we're going to just jump in and, and just guide the conversation and take you through sort of the various stages of ways of thinking about how strengths can impact uh, others in a positive way. So we're talking really generically about what we call strengths development. And for us, um, the underpinnings of that is every single individual matters. It's quite a powerful statement and it really comes close to our hearts around the values that BHG brings and the importance that we attach to how strengths development can help others become the best versions of themselves. To that end, we think everybody has a role to play and every individual makes a difference if you can connect and recognize the contribution they can make that is unique to themselves. And the wonderful thing about strengths is not only that you can develop them, take your innate talents and uh, really strive for excellence, but that you can also contribute to others. So BHG, we are a 
um, strategic Gallup licensed partner. In actual fact, we were with one of the first international partners outside of America that Gallup uh, ever appointed. And to that end, I think we've had a, a really great privilege of working with them as their international partnership uh, journey has, has really grown exponentially. As part of being a strategic licensee, we are the one-stop shop for Gallup and Strengths across the Africa piece. So literally from Cape to Cairo and everywhere in between. I have really have had the privilege of being able to travel uh, for consulting and for strength work right across Africa. So if you talk about Lagos or Nairobi or Dar or Zanzibar or Mombasa, uh, I've had the privilege of being there and working right across the Africa piece. And part of really the experience that we bring to the table is not only just the world-class research and the Gallup strengths approach, but also a, I like to think a deep understanding of Africa. We're also as a organization, a member of the International Coaches Federation. And then to show off just for one second, we are, are an award-winning strategic licensee partner. What is our goal and, and what we aim to do, and this is why we're talking to you today, is that we like to think that we want to empower people, positively disrupt workplaces, and change the way people lead by using the science of strengths. For us, strengths is both an art and a science. The science, in other words, the deep research that Gallup brings to strengths, over 50 years of research in actual fact, uh, allows us to see strengths as predictive of behavior. In other words, if I can see your strength pattern, it is almost like a behavioral DNA map to how you potentially show up. If I know this, I know how to develop you. I know how to help you to be the best version of yourself. I know where you will be able to contribute and I can help you to minimize your weaknesses or areas that hinder you or prevent you from being successful. And we want to disrupt the workplace because I think for too long, uh, people have really looked at the workplace and tried to do diagnostics and try to find out what you don't have and build you in areas where you're never going to be great at. Positive psychology is an approach that Gallup uh, is really pioneered uh, around, let's look at what you, what you can do. None of us are going to be perfect or well-rounded, but we all have areas of, of excellence, of potential for excellence. Let's identify those, let's develop those, and that's the best opportunity for you, groups and teams and leaders, to be excellent. And that's what we're all thriving, uh, striving for, is how do we thrive as individuals and be excellent in the space that we operate. So what I'm gonna to share to you, with you today is I'm gonna talk a little bit about the impact of strengths, the return on investment or the business case. There's always a couple of people that wanna go, well, all right, strengths is great, but you know, prove that it has an impact and we'll show you some numbers. And if you're a numbers person, this will be a really nice section for you. If you're not a numbers person, um, you can take our word for it and have a look at to see the areas that we are connecting with, and then you'll love the next session, which is a section which is really about knowing your strengths. We're going to talk about, well, knowing is important, but it's better to use them. So how do we bring an intentionality to strengths and the impact of strengths on people's lives? Well, there's a whole approach around strengths development. And then what is the latest thinking around how do we develop strengths or how does development really work? And that's really about individualizing the development approach to each person using a coaching methodology. And then hopefully we'll have some time at the end for us to do a bit of intellectual arm wrestling where you ask Mahit all the tough questions and you give me all the easy ones, right? So from that perspective, we'll give you some time to ask those questions. So for us, strength is the realization of excellence, the excellence that you bring to the party. The best analogy I can use or think about how to bring this to life is a sporting analogy. And uh, Wimbledon is topical. And uh, Mahit really likes watching tennis, particularly Rafa Nadal in his shorts, I think. Uh, but arguably, he's one of the world's greatest tennis players of all time. But if you notice, uh, he spent a lifetime taking that innate potential to play tennis and develop it, being coached, practicing day in and day out, and playing to the talents that he brings to the party, but they particular talents to him. The way that he plays tennis is not the same way as Djokovic or Roger Federer. You know, 
Nadal is a baseline player, particularly deadly on clay. Federer is probably a, a greater all-rounder, and Djokovic is probably have, has the greatest mental strength game known to, to, to mankind. And the nice thing about sport is we can always argue. But the point of this is that your path to success is not my path to success. So when you go into exclusive books or to a book store and you see these books go 10 steps to greatness, if you copy being Richard Branson, we find that quite difficult to understand because only you can be successful in relation to yourself, right? Because you bring a uniqueness, a personality, a set of strengths and skills that are unique to you. So for us, strength is the realization of excellence. Greater impact is not about working harder or longer. And this is a mantra that we really are trying to work with uh, in terms of particularly the corporates that we work with, because people are really just driving, well, if I just work harder and harder and harder, I'll be more successful. And the answer to that is simply not really. All that happens is you get into the stress and burnout phase. For us, it's about working smart. And how do we work smart? And this is the biggest gift I think we can give people uh, around strengths and to transform their lives is how do I work smart in relation to what I bring to the table, my uniqueness around the talent space. So good news. We don't have to work harder, which is always a fantastic one, especially to a person like me, because I like to be a bit lazy if I can. So if I can find those shortcuts, all good. So it's all very nice for me to say this, um, but you know, is it proven? Is there a track record? Is there a history of impact? And the answer to that is simply yes. And we just have to revert to what I think is a gift when you become part of the Gallup community is the Gallup research that comes with it. So Gallup has only just researched in the space 49,495 business units. Over 1.2 million employees were researched in terms of if you invest in strengths development, what is the business impact? So only 49,000 businesses were part of this session. And some of the results really, the metrics that matter for strengths development are on business is just exponential. So for those business units that consistently invested in strengths development, saw a 10 to 19% increase in sales, a 14 to 29% increase in profit, 9 to 15% increase in engagement, that discretionary effort that employees bring to the table, a 3 to 7% increase in customer engagement, and a 6 to 16% lower attrition rate. So from a research point of view, there is a direct correlation between strength development and business performance. And the rubric or the rationale around that is not hard to understand. If you invest in people in the right way, in a way that makes sense to them and celebrates their talents and helps them to turn their talents into strengths, they are going to perform better. It's not rocket science, but the research gives you a good indication that that link between what the person brings and business results, if you develop using strengths, can be both impactful for them, but also the business that they operate in. And so what does the strength journey look like? We particularly want to pick up two key concepts. We want your strength journey to help you to thrive as an individual. Thriving for us means that you're operating and in a sort of a, an excellence form, both in terms of work, home, family, all this. For us, thriving is about you holistically as a whole individual really developing and contributing where you can. Now, obviously, your contribution at home is going to look slightly different to your contribution at work and so forth, but your strengths and the way you use your strengths is congruent in terms of viewing you as a whole person. But there's a journey to, uh, to strengths that's important. Remember, not everybody has strengths. Everybody has talent. That is the raw, immature form of strength, and they may be on their journey to turn talent into strengths. And some of us may have some strengths and some talents or combinations of that. But the first step really is to understand what your talents and strengths are. And that's why the Clifton Strength Assessment is so important. And I'll give you a bit of a story around that. Understanding is not enough. You need to take ownership. You need to claim your strengths and really start to think a little bit about what that brings to the party. And then what makes the Gallup Strength approach um, quite unique in the coaching world is the high emphasis on intentionality. 
In other words, if you don't use your strengths, you essentially you lose them. So, you know, you might have a, a, a beautiful body, but if you keep eating takeaways and you don't go to the gym and you don't keep keep training that body, very shortly you're going to lose the beauty. And that's the same as, as, as strengths. We don't keep using them um, and we can't actually develop them. Um, so taking action is the way that drives and kickstarts the development process, usually catalyzed by some type of education or coaching. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So understanding ownership and of course, action is mission critical. But it all really starts with knowing your strengths. Over 27,7 million people across the globe know and use their strengths currently. It's expanding rapidly. We can never keep up with that. but the bottom line is people are using the Clifton strengths to thrive at work and everywhere else. Why an assessment? You know, people always have negative connotations around assessment because assessment applies a pass or fail. The good news is you can't fail the Clifton strength assessment because you can't fail being yourself, right? That's an important point because it's a celebration of uniqueness. So to give you a sense about why we need assessment, um, I always ask this question, what is the loudest, uh, what is the, who is the loudest, I suppose, or what, the loudest in the ocean? And uh, if you have small boys in your house like I do, they'll be watching National Geographic and they'll know the answer, but the temptation is just to guess and because the whale is the largest creature in the ocean, we all sort of default and think, well, it's probably the whale that makes the largest noise, right? Ah, but now here's the here's the the surprise. It's actually this little guy called the pistol shrimp, and you can see how small he is. It fits, you know, it's smaller than the hand of a human being. Now the pistol shrimp makes the loudest noise in the ocean. I mean, who knew and who would have guessed? And so the question is, how do they do that? And that's very congruent with the assessment. Many of us do have an inkling what our talents are, but we don't know precisely. We may not be self-aware. We may have some blind spots. And taking the assessment is a great first step in understanding what you bring to the party and a little bit about how you operate. And in the case of the pistol shrimp, you'll notice that it has a, relatively speaking, quite a large claw. And so when predators come to eat this little guy, it panics, it draws water into this claw and shoots this water out at pace and it makes a large natural largest natural underwater sound in the ocean. So who knew? The assessment there is to help us to identify our talents. But that's not the end of the story around strengths. The other one is, and I didn't tell you, is the pistol shrimp is blind. So there's no point in having this great weapon if you can't see the predators before they're about to eat you. And so what the pistol shrimp has done is really created a, a complementary evolutionary partnership with this little guy at the bottom left called the goby fish. You'll notice the goby fish has large eyes, but no natural defenses. And the partnership works in the following way. When the pistol shrimp gets threatened, uh, sorry, when the goby fish sees danger and is about to be threatened and eaten, it alerts the pistol shrimp to the danger. The pistol shrimp shoots out this water and scares the predator off. And so it's a classic example of what we call a complementary partnership in the strength world. So two things. One is you can't develop your strengths in isolation. So if you live in a broom cupboard with no interaction with other people, you're never going to develop strengths. And then the other lesson from this is your strengths are not my strengths. And so they can be very complementary. So strengths is a celebration of uniqueness, but also of diversity and difference. And it's about complementarity with others that gives us more of the sum of the parts and makes strengths teams just so dynamic. It's based on this idea that we really have to give up the notion that we can be all rounded and all things to all people, which the education system keeps telling us. The reality is, is that's not strictly speaking true. We tend to go in the direction where our talents lead us and our interests and our values drive us. Not all of us want to be an astronaut, for example. So some great strength lessons there from nature around, first of all, sometimes you don't know what your talents are. Secondly, is you, know, you don't have all the talents in the world, so, so working with others is really useful. And difference is valuable, so you can complement each other.
So I'm going to just give you a, a short video that just from Gallup that just gives you a little bit of a deeper understanding of the Clifton Strength Assessment and the strengths approach. So I'm just going to give this a play. Do you ever wonder why you make the choices you do? Why some things come naturally while others don't? Why you are drawn to certain activities and not to others? There's a simple but powerful reason. Your talents. When you understand your unique talents, you have the power to harness them, and your whole world can change. We see talent in people around us every day. The patterns of thought, feeling, or behavior that give them a unique edge. Sometimes it may even seem effortless. In fact, our talents are the keys to our innate potential. When we tap into them, we act with more confidence, inspiration, and direction. But we often take our most powerful talents for granted, or we may not even be aware of them. That's why the Clifton Strengths Finder was developed to help you discover your areas of greatest potential. Grounded in more than five decades of study, the Clifton Strengths Finder is an invaluable tool designed to help you identify and activate your talents and strengths for greater happiness and success. After completing the assessment, You'll receive a personalized report describing your signature themes of talent and an action plan designed to help you unlock your innate potential. Performing at your best is easier than you may think. When you approach your work, relationships, and community from your personal areas of strength, success follows. So what are you waiting for? Transform your world today with the Clifton Strengths Finder. Unlock your potential. The video is just very nicely, I think, in an easy way. It just illustrates just what the impact of unlocking people's innate talents are or the innate potential and what that impact could be globally if we could imagine all 7 billion of us understanding our strengths. It's great to understand your strengths and the report is fantastic. And as it alluded to, it um, provides you with action steps and so on. But many of us, in order to really catalyze our, our, our development, need help. And so we really will anchor strength development, particularly from a business or organizational perspective, around three areas of impact. One is, if you are playing to your strengths, you are naturally playing to what you're good at. It's motivational. So employee engagement goes up. Secondly, if I'm playing to what I'm good at, I'm going to perform better. And the third one is that um, I'm performing in, in a positive stress environment. Positive stress, enough stress to get me out of bed, but not enough stress to burn me out. Positive stress in the sense that I have the capacity to deal with what's around me. And the combination of motivation, performance, and well-being leads to, leads to an, a thriving person. So Gallup says, when you combine talented employees, and everybody has talent, with great managers using strengths, engagement, and well-being, you can realize a dramatic impact on performance. And just to bring that to light around sustainability, that the strength journey is just not a, it's not just a once-off event. It is a lifelong journey of development, but it's also sustainable. And the reason why we feel so passionately about this is because we've seen a major disruption in the workplace, particularly around pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. And so if you look at all the, the, the research uh, pre-pandemic, the COVID, you see that well, there's a natural inclination for engagement to keep going up. At the same time, pre-pandemic, well-being was tracking very nicely with engagement, and the overall trend across the globe was engagement and well-being was going up. Post-pandemic, we go through two years of COVID, what happens? People are still trying and are motivated to drive the performance agenda at work particularly, uh, home, community, and elsewhere. So that's stayed relatively st stable, but what's dropped dramatically is the well-being. And as soon as you get a bifurcation, in other words, a big difference between engagement and well-being schools, you're going to end up in that stress or burnout zone. 
And I think many of us can see friends, colleagues, community members, um, you know, in business that they are really just holding on with their fingertips. They're in that burnout zone. What strengths allows us to do is not only operate in the engagement well-being when it was pre-pandemic without the chaos, but it also gives us tools and approach to help people come back from that burnout zone. And it's about working smarter, not working harder. Because when people are in the burnout zone, all they see is work and they just keep shoveling not realizing that they need to ask those great questions and have perspective around why am I working so hard? What is a better place to work? Why is it that my mental health is not where it needs to be? So we think the strengths answer to impact and transformation is not just about celebrating diversity or developing excellence, but at the moment addressing a very, very vital need, which is about helping people balance themselves a little bit better in this chaotic world where there is pressure from all over the place, where we didn't anticipate the war in the Ukraine, uh, petrol prices going up, uh, every, you know, inflation and, and, and. And we're just now only starting to go back to the office. Strength has a, a great relevancy in that space of helping people navigate the high amb ambiguity and the complexity of our day-to-day -day lives. So I'm going to test you and let's see what a strength-based exercise could look like. So I'm going to ask you to, to find a piece of paper and a pen. Um, you can cheat. Uh, we can't stop you, but try this exercise and have a bit of a fun with it. I'm going to ask you to write five times, I use my strengths every day. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But I'm going to ask you to do that with your non-dominant hand. So if you naturally write badly like I do with my right hand, you're not going to do this exercise badly with your left hand, right? So your non-dominant hand. I'd like you to write, I use my strengths daily. I want to do it five times. Please don't write it like your medical practitioner does and in hieroglyphics, and we must be able to understand it. And I'm going to give you a time limit. The best people do this in about 60 seconds. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Three, two, one, go. That's right. Nom dominant hand. I use my strengths every day. Go, 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 go. I see Macrete's writing and uh, writing very, uh, very fast there. Um, it's, it's right. We have 50 seconds left. Okay, guys. Remember, world class is 60 seconds. If you're not nearing five, ooh, I'm not sure you're performing well. There must be something wrong with you. Come on, come on. Uh, by the way, it wasn't 60 seconds. It's only 40 seconds. We've changed the question. So let's see what you can do in 40 seconds. Come on, come on. Let's go, 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 go. And if you're starting to hate me, that's okay. Five, four, three, two, one, done. Put your pen or pencils down. Right. If you would like to share how they felt about that, and if you say, I hate Yendo, I get it, right? And I really do. Um, I, was, I was shouting for effect. But what did that make you? How did that feel? Anybody like to be brave and share? Okay, Yendo, you were not encouraging at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Yep. No, I, I wasn't. There was a performance agenda. And uh, so you felt, Dashila, you felt under pressure, right? Yeah, that, that approach puts people under pressure and it brings up anxiety. <laughs> okay. And what was adding to the anxiety, do you think? Uh, I think you changed the goalpost a little bit, didn't you? In terms of time, there was like, like a little bit of uncertainty in terms of, oh, is the time being shortened now? What's happening? So, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's, a, that's a great values insight, isn't it? Um, some, some people think that fairness is important. I get that. Okay. But talk to me a little bit about what was it like to use your non-dominant hand? Um, a bit of pressure as well in terms of, oh, okay, this is not going to go as well as I would like it to go. So if I use my dominant hand this would probably be easy peasy yeah so yeah. um yeah a bit of a question mark in terms of the output <laughs> the quality of the output <laughs> okay so there was, a, there was a bit of an anxiety jacob says jacob is saying in the chat um 
out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, it, it wasn't easy, um, and and so on. Yeah. So it, you know, this is a in a fun in, in a very light-hearted way. This is quite. It can be quite a stressful thing. Charlene said it felt weird. My writing was even worse than usual. Okay. So under pressure, if you're not playing to your strengths, performance is just not so easy, right? Now, yeah, is the stunning way of thinking about this. For those people that are not using their strengths in their daily work, their work of eight hours every day feels like they are writing with their non-dominant hand. Can you imagine how stressful that could be? And one of the gifts I think about strengths is helping people to play to that dominance where they can make it into Sheila saying easy peasy without having to worry about somebody like myself changing the question the whole time. But it is staggering to think that there are some people in the workplace that spend eight hours a day in that discomfort. Uh, I'm not in the space where I think I can perform or I'm stressed because I don't know the rules. I, I can't navigate some of the complexities here. And I think that's the gift of, of what strength does is, is to take them out of that burnout, that stress, that I don't like work zone and really help them to contribute in a way that makes sense and that is powerful. It is quite strange, uh, a strength-based, yes, Marinda, you raised your hand, go for it. Um, thanks, I wasn't sure for a moment if we should keep our questions to last. No, no, um, jump in. Thanks, Yendo. Just a, uh, you mentioned now that if people is not in a role, or that's how I heard it, where they, they play to their strengths, then they, they're not comfortable and go to that burnout stage. Yeah. Do you see a world where you can once you know your strengths, you can fulfill that role regardless better, even if you don't fit into it. Yeah, so I think there's a number of issues. So it's a great question, Marinda. And I think what you're wondering about is spot on. So the first thing is um, how you do your job is, will be determined by your strengths. If you can play to your strengths, you'll find ways of navigating your job a lot easier, which brings you into that zone of engagement and performance. Another way of thinking about strengths that some strengths are just not connected with what you're doing and you may be in the wrong job, but this allows you to find a role that may fit into you, uh, fit with you. And of course, the other one is remember strengths is your talent, but you still need skills. So it also may be a skill issue when we come to role. What we can't do, Marinda, is we can't say that a sales job has a particular strength profile. Therefore, if we hire people with those strengths, they're going to be successful salespeople. That you can't do because strength is unique to you, right? So in actual fact, having a strength role profile would make no sense. The better question in that case is how can I use my unique strengths to be a successful salesperson? And I can be successful if I'm congruent with myself. And so there are many different types of strength profiles for successful salespeople. Some people are influential. Some people are quiet. Some people, um, you know, can build great relationships. Others, great solutionists and whatever. Um, but that combination, everybody can be successful in a role if they use their strengths intentionally. But of course, some people are in the wrong role. I mean, this we can't avoid. What would be way cool is to turn organizational development on its head and say something, let's build jobs around people rather than try and fit people into jobs. Now, that would be the ultimate positive disruption that we see in the workplace, right? It's the same thing in education. We don't say, listen, let's find out what you're useless at and let's train you on that. What we're saying is, what can you be good at? We'll train you on that. That's much better. And I'll give you a graphic example. If you have kids at school and they come up with, home with a report and they've got an A in English, but an F in maths, our default approach is to say, well, it's nice for English, but you've got an F for math. So automatically, you need to go for extra lessons. Whereas really the feedback should be is fantastic English. Maybe I have the next William Shakespeare on my hands here. Just give you a bit of a sense of how sometimes we're just so wired to defaulting gaps. And the huge joke in my world is I used to, I, in my corporate career, I ended up being quite a senior HR guy. And the feedback every year was Yendel's great at getting business results, but he has no empathy. 
And my boss at the time kept on sending me on EQ and empathy courses. And of course, the bounce or result was not much until my strength coach said to me, you know what, forget about empathy. It's your number 34, your least dominant. But what out, and I know that you don't, it's not that you don't care about people, um, but what strengths in your top 10, your dominance, can you use to demonstrate that you do care? Man, that's just such a fundamental move, but it just changed the way that I thought about myself as an HR leader. And now it looks, looks well, of course, yes. I mean, that's obvious, right? But at the time I was stuck and that was a sort of a very meaningful shift in understanding what my strengths could bring to the party, transformational in actual fact. And uh, yeah, it's been a gift that's, that's kept on giving. Marinda, just does that give you a bit of a sense? Yeah, good. Nice question. Thank you. So we think about strength development, uh, we ask the power question, what if you can contribute your unique talent with the skills that matter in ways that best reflect who you are? For us, that seems to be the recipe for success. And the example I always use is an airline pilot. An airline pilot needs to know how to fly a plane. That's the skill, that's non-negotiable. But they're not gonna be su uh, successful as an airline pilot if they only just concentrate on flying. They managing a 400 million US dollar asset, 300 passengers, 20 crew, and they've got to get everybody in a safe way to their destination. Their strengths, the unique way that best reflects them is going to be the one that matters in terms of doing that. And so we look at four areas of strength development that you may want to connect with the training programs that you're running or the education pieces that you do. But we work with leaders around expectations of strength based leaders. What do leaders do in the strength space? We work with managers. And yeah, we see a distinct shift away from telling and shouting. You know, Dashila didn't like the way that I, I was a bit shouty in the hand exercise. And she certainly didn't like the way I kept changing the, the, the criteria. We're moving away from that, that type of leadership and management to really about how do I engage with you and coach you and develop you around your strengths. We're looking at teams, every individual contributing together for team success. And if you ever have time to take McCreet for a coffee, she will share some of the most amazing results that she's been achieving with working with teams that particularly have diversity problems. For us, diversity is a strength. It's valuable if we can connect with it. And then we work with individuals. How can we help con uh, them contribute better in terms of knowing their strengths? From an organization perspective, we like to connect this with the employee experience. So if you play to your experience, you go, uh, to your strengths, you're going to have a great employee experience, but you can anchor strengths at every part of the journey in an organization. You can use strengths to attract at the recruitment stage, hire, pick the best stars, onboard, engage, perform, develop, and then obviously depart with a positive experience. So strength is not just a developmental process that you can workshop and educate and, and coach on. It's something you can anchor and make part of your workplace or organizational culture, whether you are a faith-based organization, higher ed, uh, a corporate, a small business, a sales force, it, it doesn't matter. Each part of that employee experience can really be transformed or facilitated by using strengths. The key shift now is not to send people on huge amounts of strength training, but really to start thinking about how do we inculcate and develop strengths. And that's through the great, the newest trend from a learning and development spect, uh, uh, perspective. And that's about individualizing the learning experience to each person. So this notion of putting people into big training programs and one size fits all and everybody goes through the leadership development program and it's provided in the same way to everybody, I think has become a little bit outdated. For us, it's about individualizing to each person. And the way we individualize is obviously based on the Clifton Strength Assessment, because if I know your top 10, I can combine it with the top 10 combinations or pairings, and we can have a lifelong journey of development that is meaningful to you. 
obviously, if you need to know accounting or flying an aircraft or whatever, you must go on the training program. You know, we can't, uh, but supplementing or anchoring that around excellence is where you will start to see return on investment in your strength development and your training budget. And yeah, particularly the notions of building in your organization, people that can champion strengths. And then of course, the Gallup Strength Coaching Certification, which we'll talk a little bit about. So why are we so passionate about individualization and coaching? Um, this video clip, I think will bring this to life quite nicely. What I love is watching people transform over time. So it's interesting when people get into coaching, they almost feel that it's a selfish decision. I think people have to have coaches in their lives to create excellence. So you've got this amazing assessment, but it doesn't stop there. You have to be able to look at that and think about practical application. And sometimes that's hard to do as an individual because you're still kind of learning about what strengths is all about. And I think what a great coach does is help those things come alive for you and really helping you think about what are things that keep you up at night? What are things that you struggle with? What do you think your strengths get in the way? How do your strengths get more optimized? I help people sort uh, through the, the challenges that they're facing, think through what's really causing it, as well as what are their goals that they have and what do they want to do. So I get them to think about it and then I provide them a perspective based on who they are. So it's really thinking about who they are and how they do things naturally anyway. And sometimes their eyes are just open of, yeah, I do that. And they don't even realize that they're, they're doing that all the time. And you just provide a perspective from outside of the person that they start to see, okay, I've got this in me. I, I know I can do it. And, now I've got some real specific ways of how I can. Um, they get an opportunity to, to do something that is already within them and we're just helping them to really highlight it and think about what they do. We're always asking people to take some action, to do something, to, to take the first step. We talk about goals, we talk about workplace challenges, and through the conversation and through some of the questions and. Um, they, they really, it gives them an opportunity to uh, come up with some strategies uh, to try. So now they move from a space of being stuck to a space of, oh, I've got some strategies. I've got a place, I, I, I've got some ideas. I've got um, some suggestions of things to try so I can go from this reality into this aspiration. I think the coaching that I provide to, to individuals and teams uh, gives individuals, I think, permission to really be themselves and have their own, perhaps their own style, their own method, their own ways of achieving particular things. I believe it empowers them to deploy themselves in the best possible fashion. Um, and I, th I think it also gives them a sense of confidence um, in how they might embrace a particular challenge or embrace a particular difficulty um, and be well, more intentional in, uh, in how they can, you know, get stuff done and be more effective. They're happier, and because they're happier, they're more productive. Their quality increases, their relationships increase. They want to just be happier, healthier, more productive. It creates that ripple effect of well-being in their life. Everything gets better for them. They quickly discover it's not just for them, that it really spills over into every aspect of their life, so they become better parents, better spouses, better partners, better colleagues, better leaders, better managers. Watching them kind of step up into their responsibilities with more strength and more confidence, more power, I think that's what I love about coaching. You saved my job. You saved my family. No one's ever asked me that before. Um, I've never thought about that before. Um, thank you for being honest. Thank you for being direct. I know I'm a better leader. I know I'm a better manager. Um, I know I treat people differently. Um, I know I get better results. The reality is when we know 
who we are. We are just going to be better at what we do. So when we understand the dynamics of how we get things done or how we foster relationships or how we think, there's just something magic when we understand who we are because it translates then into what we do every day. So having those conversations with people, helping them think through really and truly what it is about them that gives them energy and fulfillment and having them put that into some sort of practice as they think about what they do every day, that's a fun job. So I can certainly echo that. I always say to Mahrit, we have the coolest jobs in the world. We do two things. We do what these people on the video uh, uh, suggest and give us indication. And we've had the luxury of engaging and meeting some of these great people. And they are real. They're not, they're not actors. And the other thing that we do is we train people to really use strength development in the ways that we've been suggesting throughout this. So we're going to leave you with this before we get into questions and answers. And uh, as an invitation, why don't you consider joining our global community? There are about 10,000 Gallup Global Certified Strength Coaches across the world, only about 200 across Africa. So around four Gallup coaches per country, if you divide it that way. And if you think that Africa has over 1 billion people in the population, we've still got a ways to go. And so the invitation to join the global community is both a supportive one, plus also a challenge to help roll out what we think is a great positive message. So what is the value then of becoming a Gallup Certified Strength Coach? Gallup has a great way of putting that, so I'll leave the video to give you a steer. The certification process, one, gets folks ready to actually coach. So oftentimes we get coaches that are from outside the community. They've done some coaching, but this really gives them kind of coaching in a box, gives them the ability to get out of our courses and go right into coaching. I think it's a great business feature. Many of our coaches work in space where orgs or organizations are looking for that certification. They really wanna know it's there. And I think having it is really, really helpful. We literally create hundreds of hours of content for our coaches. That's sort of made available to them through things like podcasts or through YouTube videos that are available. There are instructions, not just on how to be a coach, but how to work in the coaching community, different examples from coaches all around the world. We do podcasts in Singapore, in Sydney. We just did one out of the Philippines. Of course, we do them here out of the United States. We completed one in the UK. They're done in Spanish. We have a new one coming in Japanese. We do them and make them available for folks to be able to have this opportunity to learn and grow that way. Over the last half decade, we have created this learning series every year. It happens in January. It's for all of our certified coaches around the world. And it's really, it's eight to 10 sessions of some of the best learning that's going on at Gallup right now. That's just for our certified coaches. It's, it's kind of one of those benefits to being certified. It can, we want to keep them in the loop and keep them educated at all times. So the person on the video is a gentleman called Jim Colson, and he really leads what we call Theme Thursday, which is the podcast that happen every Thursday. And when we say that Gallup issues more templates, tools, guides, and supports that you can bottom out, I, I can, you can take that literally. I'm free to myself, have not used all the tools that Gallup has made available to coaches yet. And we do this for a living to give you a sense of just some of the depth and, and, and the amazing stuff. It is fantastic. And we found it very useful to be part of a global community and learn from people in different cultures and across the globe as to how they're using strengths. And the Gallup community is very supportive and will share. From that perspective, guys, I'm going to bring this um, to a close. And Nozipo has just asked about um, the certification and we'll jump straight into the Q&A. We've got about four minutes available to us. So just a signpost, if you need to drop off at 
on the hour because you've got something else to do please do no offense taken we thank you for joining us if you can hang around and want to ask us questions we'll be hanging around but we'll certainly then keep the recording going and you can benefit from the recording itself Makrit, whilst I drink a glass of water quickly, do you want to just ask, answer Mazipa's question about how the certification works and what is entailed? Yes, thank you, Yendor. Mazipa, your, your, uh, uh, your question around um, what does it entail? So to become a Gallup Global Strengths Coach has several steps. The first step is to complete your coursework. During your course, that takes place within a, a cohort format, you will have the opportunity to really coach the different tools that Gallup provides you with. So you're going to learn about uh, strengths, multidimensionality, theme dynamics, how to coach individuals on the name it, claim it and, and aim it framework, um, really from understanding to ownership to action, if you will. Uh, you will also learn how to coach managers, how to help a manager to understand their own management style from a coaching or Clifton Strengths um, uh, perspective. Also helping the manager to understand the strengths of their team members. You know, how do I motivate someone who's got strategic like, uh, like Yendor? Then the third section is how do I help a team to really become strengths-based, to form uh, complementary partnerships, to, um, to support one another, to perform at a higher level through their strengths. So that's the first, the, the, the first step, your course. The second step is to pause your exam. So the exam is about two hours, uh, it's 100 questions, um, multiple choice, etc. Once you've passed your exam, the, you need to submit six evaluations from six people that you have coached. So this coaching journey with your six people needn't be long. It's one hour per person, helping them to understand their strengths profile once they have completed the Clifton Strengths Assessment. When you have completed those three steps, you are then a Gallup Global Strengths Coach. Now, this unlocks quite a number of benefits. And the first benefit is that you get access to 350 Clifton Strengths assessment codes per year at a discounted rate. Okay. I just want to emphasize per year, so into perpetuity. What does that mean? You purchase the assessment with your special promo code that allows a discount, and then you sell it to your clients at retail price. The difference you put back into your pocket as a return on your investment for becoming a Gallup Global Strengths Coach. Annually, Gallup will also invite you to continuous professional development where you will receive, if you're part of the ICF, CCE credits. And by the way, for completing the certification, you will also get credits to the ICF, SHRM, as well as the uh, HRCI. So that learning, um, learning series then takes place over the course of a week. That is included in the cost of your package. Every second year, you need to recertify. You need to write an, another exam. Those costs are also included in your certification uh, uh, fee, your package fee. In other words, um, there's no membership fees, there's no royalty fees. You get everything that you need, not once off, but annually to become a great strengths coach. Thanks, Yendor. Right, questions coming in fast and hard. Right, so Nazipa, what support do we provide? In actual fact, um, it we 
as BHG, we have received an award from Gallup around our support for our community and our alumni. And what is involved in that is takes several forms. So over and above what Gallup does, we run four masterclasses every single year for our alumni that it's free, usually a highly topical and important topic from the Gallup world and international speaker and so forth. We are in terms of supporting you, you are allowed and, and open to join our coaching panel. So when we get coaching work and we need additional coaches, you'll be the ones that we go to. You can also join the international Gallup coaches portal and so on. So the support in actual fact, we probably, there are times I think people will want us to go away we provide too much support in terms of that but it is a vibrant community and from that perspective a lot of support Marinda, in terms of your question around does Gallup research include Africa, the answer is absolutely. And the difference you'll see is usually the distribution pattern of strengths. So in other words, the strength that comes up most often in Africa may look slightly different to the dominance in the States or Japan or something of that nature. So in Japan, harmony comes up in top five. In Africa, it tends to be achiever, if I, if I recollect. Globally, it's achiever and so on. So what the difference is, is a slight difference in dominance distribution pattern. Uh, remember that the Clifton Strength Assessment is not impacted by difference in culture. And I can send you the, the study on that. Very quickly then, Peter, you were saying the 1.2 million. Um, just tell us a little bit about what your question is in the space. You wanted to know a little bit more information about that. Peter? Hello, yes. No, I just wanted to hear, um, like 1.2 sounds like a really a lot of people. So I was yeah. just wondering, like, is it full-time people working only for Gallup or is it like you're getting information in from other uh, universities okay. and pulling that uh, in? Or how does it work? No, no. That's the, when they looked at the impact of strength development on performance, they researched mm -hmm. 49,000 business units. So essentially 49,000 companies encompassing 1.2 million employees. That's ah. where that number comes from, right? So Gallup okay. obviously doesn't employ 1.2 million researchers. Exactly. I mean, I, I thought, think they'd wow. love to, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. But that's just that's just on strength development. They interviewed a million managers for their book. It's the manager, and mm -hmm. something exponential. Um, so their ability to survey and poll um, for great research is is unrivaled. So it's fascinating, um, and we can have a a side discussion on that a bit later. Perfect. Thank you. 100%. Excellent. Okay. The million dollar question in Azebo is saying is how much does this cost? Right. So um, the Gallup price for certification is discounted for Africa participants. Um, and we get a 50% discount on the price. And that works out for those that are working in dollars to around 3,850 US dollars. Once price, one, one price, lifelong uh, value, or if you're in South Africa, 56,000 Rand excluding VAT. Uh, remember that's one price. For those that don't have corporates paying for them, we'd also have a payment plan available. Just drop us a note and we'll certainly be able to help you with that. Also understand that we don't just do the certification, we support assessments, we do strength education, we do strengths advisory, and of course we certify coaches. Good. Uh, Nazibo, have I, I think you asked about 20 questions. I'm hoping I got to the nub of that, right? Yeah, no, Nazibo also asked, does the certification automatically allow one access to be a member of the ICF? So anyone can be a member of the ICF, but to be credentialed, you need, you need to fulfill certain criteria. Now, the Gallup certification provides you with half of that uh, criteria in, in, uh, in the form of credits. So you will get uh, 36 credits for, uh, uh, for your first credential, which is the ACC. And I think you need 60 credits. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right, guys, any other questions? Thanks, Williamson. Good to, to hopefully we uh, have intrigued you sufficiently to want to join our the global Gallup community. So thanks for your input and thanks for being with us. You know, Marinda also asked an important question. When is the next intake? 
Uh, it uh, starts on the 19th of September. So uh, we will also communicate those dates through to you. Thanks, Miranda. Yeah. So, Miranda, we run about we run five public sessions every year where uh, everybody um, uh, can participate. What's quite nice about that is it's usually people from five or six African countries all on the same program. So um, the learning experience is quite nice. Of course, if you have five or more internal people that want to uh, certify, we could run it in a house for you um, because then we can customize, um, which you know in house allows for. Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks, Nosipu. Right. Guys, if you have to barrel off, that's fine. Not a problem. Thank you very much for joining us. It was great to engage with you and put faces to names. If you want to hang around and ask us more questions, we are going to hang around. Entirely up to you. But thank you for those that we do know, Peter, Shirley, and so forth. Great to see you again. Goodbye, Thanks, everybody. Thank you.